If you've got your microeconomics final exam coming up, this is how you draw the cost curves for perfect competition versus monopoly. We're gonna go over ATC, AVC, AFC, marginal cost, and how the marginal revenue curve differs between the two market structures. And before we get started here, if you need to learn this entire class in one night, go check out my microeconomics cram kit in my bio. This is basically like having me as your tutor the night before your exam. But with that being said, we're gonna start with the ATC curve. Until I say so, all these curves remain constant for perfect competition versus monopoly. So for both firm types, the ATC is just going to be a downward sloping U shape. The AVC is going to be positioned slightly below it, and it will get closer and closer to the ATC curve. Because the distance between these two curves at every unit is just the average fixed cost, which will look something like this. It's just going to be a constantly downward sloping line like that. I could probably have it sloping down a little bit more, because at this point, this distance right here should be this distance right here. AFC plus AVC equals ATC. All right, so these remain constant whether or not you're working with perfect competition or monopoly. And so does this MC curve. But the key thing that you got to remember when you're drawing these is that it must intersect. I did my best there, but it must intersect the AVC and ATC at their minimum points. It's like right here and right here. The reason being is because marginal cost is the additional cost that a unit brings. This is gonna be largely derived from variable cost because fixed cost stays constant no matter how many units we output. And when the marginal cost or the additional cost of a unit rises above the current average, whether it's variable or total, it's gonna to start dragging up those curves with it because each additional unit just is getting more and more expensive. So that's why the marginal cost curve intersects the AVC and ATC at their minimum points. All right, now from here, if we're working with a perfectly competitive firm, that means that their marginal revenue curve is going to be horizontal at whatever the market price is. We'll call it P star here because perfectly competitive firms have to accept the market price no matter how many units they output. Each additional unit of output they generate is going to yield the same additional revenue, the market price, whatever every other perfectly competitive firm is selling their good at. It's not like they can decrease their prices to sell more units. Now, how do these curves look different if we're working with a monopoly? The only thing I'm gonna erase here is the marginal revenue curve. The reason being, monopolies derive their price off of the demand curve. So I'll draw that like this right here. And then from here, the marginal revenue curve is gonna be downward sloping at two times the slope of the demand curve. Like this right here. I'm not gonna break that down in this video, but. When you do the math for each additional unit sold and derive the price off of the demand curve, the additional revenue from each unit is essentially just two times the slope of the demand curve. And real quick, I do want to take note of this. This is how you derive price for a monopolistic firm. Pinpoint the MR equals MC point, draw a vertical line. The price is not going to be just that. We got to go up to the demand curve and then across to derive price. Is at this quantity of units, consumers are willing to pay wherever we lie on the demand curve. 